Welcome to this rebroadcast of an interview with Chris Shea, founder of Life's Journey Life Coaching. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. But I have had grown men who've done no consciousness work burst into tears because of the first time in their life that anyone ever gave them the experience that we could have two separate realities. When couples argue a lot, sometimes people think this is a really bad thing in a relationship, but can it ever be used as a tool to help a couple improve their relationship? I, I do believe that that is possible, that as long as they can understand that arguing in a healthy way, and by healthy, I mean we're, we're not arguing to put the person down. Uh, those are the unhealthy arguments that I really think other tools are needed, whether uh, they separate themselves or, or use other uh, you know, tools that they've been taught as, as far as coming back together. Whenever you put people together, we're not always going to be 100% symbiotic. There's always going to be something that differentiates us from the other. If we hold all of that in, I think part of the problem that becomes is our resentments are going to build. And I've seen that in a lot of my clients who come in and what they're telling me are things that have been from years and years and years. They feel that in any argument, it's going to be negative. If people can understand that we can argue with certain rules, and I, I really think it'd be important for people to sit down, couples and partners, and, and to just say, when we have disagreements, when we get angry at each other, here's what we're going to do. Here's almost what we, we are allowed to do and what we're not allowed to do. So that when you have those rules, it becomes that healthy setting where then, yeah, if we start screaming and yelling at each other, we're doing it within these guidelines that we've already set up. We're getting out the emotion and the passion and, and anything we've got so that the other one can hear and then respond. The arguing back and forth where we're cutting each other off, I think that's part of the unhealthy. Give the person a little bit of space to let that out. Once they've got it out, even if you need to yell back and you're angry at what they're saying, but as long as what they're saying bears some truth, at least in their perception, and, and our own perception is our own truth, mm -hmm. and let the person you know vent, the other one comes back, and what you now have is a sharing of emotions. And it, it may not be in the best way, but you still have a sharing of emotions. I think that fighting is, is normal, and I worry when couples aren't fighting. And so, you know, a, a couple being able to rough and tumble and to be able to have some play in their fighting, but also being clear about what their purpose is, what they're trying to accomplish. There are couples that, you know, we give them five, you know, one of the exercises we'll do when we watch couples um, is give them a five-minute limit to uh, get through this fight, but the, the goal is they have to end up right set up, right? They have to end up in a way that they're both looking good. Uh, this is a test to see whether actually the couple can tie things off, whether they can end something, not, you know, cure cancer, but just end this one thing. Uh, if, if partners are thinking in terms of uh, not just what's good for me, what am I fighting for, but also uh, can I express what your interests are, what you're afraid of, um, what you're worried about with me. If I can't articulate that, if I can't put myself in your shoes, then we get nowhere, right? Uh, if we're just squaring off and I take my position, you take your position, even just that position alone is adversarial. Uh, th there is no way that they can actually get anywhere. Uh, and nobody could. So this business of taking care of yourself and the other person at the same time is an important idea. I was going to say, when I get them, though, they're in the bottom of the barrel, and it's almost divorce time. And, of course, they don't want to split up because of the children. So I really put in there some baselines. What is your boundaries? What is your boundaries that says it's over? Because I've got to get them back in time of what do they think they're doing? And I, I, I sometimes it's like they don't even aware how loud they get. Well, then I said, have you had, your, had you had yours checked lately? Because I said, I don't hear you being loud, but she does. Yeah. It's her perception. And perception wins. Right. And so I, I, I do have to do the basics with them. Yeah. 
I'm sitting here by her or by him, and I don't see that. So I get to the real basics, and then I can send them to you. <laughs> I do an intervention with couples, and Stan, can I use you for a second? Yeah, you okay. <laughs> I, I go over what different two different scenarios from childhood. Mommy A, come on, we have to go to Grandma's. That feels good. <laughs> <laughs> and let's say you're building a tower. You're playing with blocks. And I come over to you and I say, I feel like a witch. I can't leave you alone here, but we have to go to Grandma's. She's sick. And you go, I don't want to go. <laughs> and I say, there's no reason you should want to go. And I have had, I'm doing this very quickly, but I have had grown men who've done no consciousness work burst into tears because of the first time in their life that everyone ever gave them the experience that we could have two separate realities and still be friends. And I think it's a very important thing for couples to see that they lack that structure, that we can have two separate realities and still have friends. And that intervention simple as it is, gets people to realize they've never had that experience before. Well, that's a developmental issue. Yes, and it is, uh, it is a, yeah. definitely a developmental issue. So, yeah. If you're watching and arguing has plagued your relationship, it sounds like what the panel is really trying to tell you is to be curious about why you're fighting and what's going on inside of you. Take it as a moment to learn something about your relationship. And if you need help, reach out to these fine people. They're here to help you. listening to this episode with Chris Shea. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com.